Well, we're here just in the water, straight off the reef crest. And you're in a region here where we've started to get some waves pounding on the reef crest. Now, one of the important functions that coral reefs have is to dissipate that energy that's coming from waves and storms. And what you can see in terms of the coral community around me are a lot of very tough corals that are hanging on for dear life here as these waves come in. Now, it's a relatively calm day, but I'm still having trouble hanging on. As you can see, there are waves breaking over the top here. And it's this wave stress environment at which we begin our journey down the reef slope to the end of the reef. So let's go a little bit deeper and see what we find. Well, here we are. We're now at 10 meters below the surface. We're coming down the reef slope. And we're at a point where there's luxurious coral growth. You can see there's far more branching coral. And it's this part of the reef which is really growing at the fastest and most productive rate. As we saw in the shallows, corals are struggling against wave action. But down here, you've got ideal light, you've got oceanic water very low in nutrients and sediments, and it's really the best place for corals to grow. So if you look at the platform reef of Heron Island, you'll see that it, this is where it's growing. This is the most actively growing part of the atoll. But as we keep on going down the reef slope, we'll start to lose light, there will be less and less coral until we get to the great sandy expanses, which is where the coral reef part of the reef has finished. So let's go and have a look at that. Well, I can see things that I'm getting deeper here. Things are changing. There's a lot less coral. There's a lot of other organisms. There's soft corals. And I'm getting to a point where um, corals are probably not growing as prolifically as I saw at 10 meters. But there are some other interesting creatures here. We have a really large sea anemone right in front of us here. This one looks like it's doing very well. You can see tiny little peculiar clownfish swimming through the tentacles. Of course that brown color is zooxanthellae are the symbiotic dinoflagellates. Oh, this is an interesting one. Here's another solitary coral. This is another species which lives um, independently of the bottom. So it's, it's mobile like that. Doesn't tend to go anywhere. But it's got a different growth form as you would appreciate to those that we've seen so far. Well, here we are. We're at 20 metres below the surface. The light levels are getting lower. The amount of coral is giving way to sandy expanses. So we don't no longer have the sort of rich coral habitats we have behind us. But of course we have a whole series of new habitats as we head out into the great sandy expanses between the, the reef systems, between the platform reefs. And so if I keep going that way, it'll slowly get deeper until it will no longer be accessible by scuba diving. At that point, you have to switch over to submarines and remotely operated vehicles. And that's exactly what we've been doing at the University of Queensland to understand these systems.